Ever wanted to make your imagination come alive but didn't know how? Wanted to imagine how it is to travel to a futuristic city? Or how would two dogs look like if they were to host a podcast on a mountain? Or something like absolutely crazy, like, I don't know, a nighttime shot of a hermit cub using a light bulb as its shell. With OpenAI Sora, you finally can imagine or visualize all of that. Tim Brooks and Bill Peebles are at it again. After developing in stack pix to pix and the Google Pixel's camera algorithm, they are now leading the development of the most advanced video generation model from OpenAI. It's called Sora. It's amazing. Let's talk about it. I don't usually make videos about tools you cannot actually use yet. But in this case, Sora is so big and so special, I just couldn't ignore it. It's Similar to DALI and uh, ChatGPT in the sense that it accepts a prompt from the user and generates what it calls a scene, which is basically a video of uh, up to one minute long, consisting of a single sequence or like a single location. OpenAI shows some examples of what Sora can do on the website. And all those examples look absolutely marvelous. There's mammoths, there's uh, fluffy animated creatures, and even a cat demanding breakfast. As of the writing of this video, so is only available for testing to uh, teamers, which is basically security experts, artists, filmmakers, and videographers who are handpicked by OpenAI. In this video, I'm going to go over what so is, what we already know about how it works, and I will show you a bunch of examples of videos it generated. It's not perfect yet, but I can confidently say that it's a revolution in content creation and generation. The ability to create videos from text is almost here for everybody to use, and we're one step closer to being able to generate entire films using AI. At its core, Sora is a diffusion model. And at the same time, Sora is a transformer. Yes, that same transformer from GPT, generative pre-trained transformer. And yes, that same diffusion from stable diffusion. I already talked a lot about diffusion models in my mid-journey series, such as this video, so make sure to watch it uh, to learn more about diffusion models in general. But Sora doesn't just generate an image, it generates a video. So how does it do that? Well, building on top of the regular diffusion process, Sora uses something called space-time patches. It uses that to encode not just the image uh, or like the concept to generate, but also the movement around it. Right, so everything related to timing and animation is encoded in a space-time patch. It uses the millions of videos in its training to encode both the concept rendered and the movement of the, the object, the subject, and so on. Since the image is uh, just a single frame in a video, it makes sense to kind of start working on one image, diffuse it based on the constraints and limitations of the prompt you give it, and then use the space-time patches to animate it. So basically finding similar movements in the training material to change the uh, generated image into a moving video. This is also where Sora's ability to animate essentially any image comes from, because it anyway by default animates a static image. And every AI model needs to be trained. We need to tell the model uh, what sort of output we want and what do we expect from it. As with any diffusion algorithm, the more work being put into the generation, both in training and inference, the more it will look consistent and realistic. Sora also leverages what OpenAI has learned with the DALI 3. And it uses GPT to expand the prompt you give it into something more detailed before feeding it to the image generator and eventually to the video generator. As always, the more detailed the prompt is, the more realistic the process of the generation becomes. So I was trained on a variety of images uh, and videos with different lengths and different resolutions. And as you can imagine, uh, this makes it incredibly powerful and versatile. You can generate videos of up to one minute. You can generate them in vertical aspect ratio, squares, horizontal, and of all kinds of resolutions up to 1080p. And of course, from 1080p, you can upscale it further uh, with a uh, AI upscaler as well. But where Sora really makes the magic happen is that it ensures something that is called temporal consistency, or essentially that it can make all of those images together kind of flow together into one consistent video. 
but the end result is absolutely fantastic. Like for example, look at this video of a puppy playing in the snow. <laughs> this looks so good. And I think it all began just from static noise. Now that we know how solar works, let's go into what it can be used for. To be clear, AI video generators are nothing new. We've had them for around a year now, and I will make a separate video on all the different AI video generators you can already use right now. What makes Sora so good is how realistic it is and how flexible it is. We've already seen how it can animate a static image, but it can also do style transfer, basically taking style from one video or from an image and apply it to a whole video. It can extend videos both backwards and forward to create seamless loops. But this isn't even the craziest part. So it's also able to interpolate or basically add new frames to an existing or generated video. And it means that you can generate uh, higher frame rates or smooth slow motion videos from a regular video. It's pretty crazy stuff. Let's say you want to generate a Labrador hacking a mainframe. Ta-da! Or a monkey playing chess in Central Park. Or just a close-up of a squirrel coming to the camera and eating nuts. If I wouldn't tell you this is AI, would you guess it? By the way, today's soil adds a small uh, watermark on the bottom of every generated uh, animation. So, however, of course, that can be copped. Combining all of this, you get a very flexible tool that leans heavily towards realistic visualization and creative exploration. So, it's a way for all of us to let that inner artist go absolutely crazy. And if you can describe it, so I can probably render it. And in most cases, in a very realistic way. Again, just look at how realistic this close up is. If I wouldn't tell you it's AI generated, what are the chances you would uh, know it's AI generated? And I'm talking about version 1 of Sora, not even version 5, like we're in mid join right now. And here's a side by side comparison of a real location in California and how Sora imagines that location. And even though the actual place mentioned in the prompt for the AI version doesn't exist, the model have generated a place very similar to the real one. And I, I could even argue it's more beautiful than the original. OpenAI has been heavily pushing Sora as a tool that extends your creative toolbox, putting it in the hands of creators and videographers. And while at first I imagine Sora being more of a replacement for stock footage, in the hands of skilled creatives it becomes a powerful storytelling tool in its own right. I'd love to show you a few examples. First is Elhead by Shy Kids. Shy Kids are a creative studio out of Toronto that helped OpenAI test out Sora, and they ended up creating what I think is the first full story animated or filmed, not sure which one is it in this case, with Sora. I see things a different way from everyone else. Yeah, and I feel like it's because of that perspective I'm reminded every day that life is fragile. It's kind of amazing how the model handles the transparency of the balloon, keeps the background, and how shy kids were able to maintain consistency in the different generations of the main characters throughout the whole uh, animation or video. Next is Beyond Our Reality by Don Allen. Don Allen is a creator that started as an animator at DreamWorks, but today he's a respected creator in his own right, and he's another one of those testers that uh, OpenAI had given access to Sora. So let's watch Beyond Our Reality. <laughs> Welcome to Beyond Our Reality, a journey through parallel worlds, where we delve into the extraordinary. I mean, this is absolutely mind-blowing. It's amazing how real and alive all those creatures look like. It would be extremely hard to recreate this in 3D software and rig it in a realistic way. And here Sora just creates it based on pure text prompts and imagines those new creatures you've never seen before, and yet I could believe they exist. Paul Trillo who is another director that has access to Sora and helps OpenAI test it, said that working with Sora is the first time I felt unchained as a filmmaker, not being restricted by time, money, or other people's permission. I can ideate and experiment in bold and exciting ways. Exciting. 
looking forward to being able to ideate just like he did. Okay, as impressive as Sora is, it's still very early in its development. This is version 0.18 now. And it obviously has a few bugs and limitations. Right now, Sora sometimes struggles with real world physics. What I mean by that is sometimes bouncing balls or soft bodies like jelly, cloud, sponge, shattering glass, and other things can deform um, or might not even render really well in Sora. For example, look at that video, which seems like a video from the 60s. Notice how the smoke in this video jumps from the second cigarette to the cigarette in his mouth and the cigarette in his hand is like double cigarette. Completely wrong, but that smoke does not comply with the laws of physics at all. And since Sora generates uh, one scene at a time, of course, temporal consistency is maintained only within the same scene. So if a person bites a cookie in one scene, that cookie, of course, wouldn't have the bite mark in the next generation. Sometimes it can be even inconsistent within the same generation. Look uh, at how those pups appear and disappear out of thin air, like appear and disappear. They're not even, each individual pup is not consistent with that same pup over different frames in the animation. Here we see a person that is running backwards and it, it almost looks realistic. It almo it's almost there, but the person is flipped and people just don't turn that way. But as always, once it's public, people will find all kinds of hacks and prompting techniques to achieve their storytelling goals. And they will find ways to work around the limitations. And version 1.2, version 2 is gonna be way, way better. But even as it is right now, Sora is able to produce videos that integrate amazingly well into existing uh, workflows and enable you to generate things not otherwise possible with almost any other video generation or creation technique today. And some of you might be thinking, well, don't we already have video generation models? We have Runway, we have Pika, we have uh, Stable Diffusion Video, we have uh, Hyper, all of those. Maybe OpenAI is late to the party. And while that's a valid thought, Sora brings a number of major improvements. First, Runway, Pika, and all the others can generate up to four second videos. With the option to extend them maybe with another generation and another generation, but those generations aren't even necessarily consistent with the first one. Sora can generate out of the box videos for up to one minute. That's a whole scene. OpenAI also claims that Sora is built for simulation. It reflects the physical world's limitations, and in fact, it learned the laws of physics just from watching online videos. Since Sora learned about the world from watching videos, it also able to simulate digital worlds that don't always comply with our laws of physics. Imagine generating your house in Minecraft using AI. Whatever you can think of, or whatever there's a video of, Sora can do it. Well, with all of that being said, Sora is still in closed beta. I don't have access to it as of right now. I do hope to get access to it soon. And for all intents and purposes, it could be that OpenAI just make up all the examples and they don't actually exist. I doubt it, but it could be. I hope that OpenAI will make Sora publicly available soon. With that said, the current ETA would be around half a year from now, and but maybe it will be gradually opened uh, as well. Once I've used Sora for a while and tested what it can actually do, I'll have a much better idea of how it's going to impact the lives of creative professionals. But the bottom line remains the same. It's fast, it's accurate, and it's extremely realistic. And it's essentially the next generation in, in AI video generation, at least according to the OpenAI demos. To be clear, I don't think Sora will make videographers or creators obsolete. I mean, 3D graphics didn't make animators obsolete, but forced them to learn a new skill set. As we've already seen, creative creators and directors are no longer limited to what they can shoot, but are only bound by their own imagination. I've got a strong feeling that Sora is going to make waves in the workflow for creative professionals, especially where stock footage is needed and is not available. Like for example, this video of an ant generated by Sora. It could also be used to fill in the gaps, so to say, uh, for existing projects or for new ones. This could be done by Frankensteining, sort of like a generated video between two clips 
or generating an entirely new one from scratch to enhance the storytelling. And the potential of those is limitless. Since all isn't available yet, I'm working on a video comparing the video generators you can actually use right now. It's coming soon, so you might want to turn on those notifications and click the subscribe button not to miss it. If you like this video, there's a high chance you will like my channel in general. It's all about using digital tools to make your life easier. I post new videos regularly, so again, make sure to subscribe. That's all, folks. I'll see you next time I feel like making a video. Bye.